Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, what is pathological lying? If you find this video to be interesting or helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. That way you won't miss anything new. Now, when we talk about the term pathological lying, we're talking about a set of symptoms that appears to be distinct, although there's controversy about that, and right now is not a mental disorder. So pathological lying is not a mental disorder in the diagnostic and statistical manual. But the construct has been studied for a number of years and has a few different names, including compulsive lying, mythomania, morbid lying, and pseudologia fantastica. Here I'm just going to refer to it as pathological lying. So there are three main schools of thought in terms of where pathological lying fits in with mental health. First is that it's a distinct mental disorder and it should be classified as such. So with this school of thought, pathological lying is just overlooked. It should be a disorder, it's not a disorder. The second school of thought is that it is distinct and it could qualify to be a mental disorder, but it does not impair functioning or it's not treatable. So that theory has a few different subtypes. The last theory is that the symptoms may or may not be distinct but they're really just behaviors that are part of other disorders, specifically cluster B personality disorders, so antisocial, narcissistic, borderline, and histrionic. Sometimes we see with this theory that the symptoms, the behaviors seen with pathological lying are also included as part of factitious disorder or malingering. So when we talk about pathological lying, we're talking about a construct for which there is no agreed upon definition. So what are some of the characteristics of pathological lying? Well, we see repeated lying that takes place over the course of years, becomes a regular habit, and the primary motivation does not appear to be related to social status, material gain, or really be otherwise obvious. So the reason for the lying seems to be without purpose. So this set of symptoms appears to be chronic, it's seemingly impulsive. A lot of the lies seen with pathological lying are fantastical, but not beyond the realm of what's possible. So usually they're right at the edge of fantasy before it would become just unbelievable. Pathological lying behaviors can also co-occur with normal lying, lying that's there to avoid consequences or to be altruistic. We also see that the lying and pathological lying may be a reward in itself. So there may be an internal motive for telling the lies. Also, people affected by pathological lying don't always recognize their own behavior. So in a sense, it can be self-deception as well as an attempt to deceive others. Sometimes it's described in the literature as a daydream or a fantasy that's communicated as true. So instead of an internal daydream or fantasy, Individuals who demonstrate pathological lying behaviors communicate these daydreams and fantasies to other people. Eventually, they could come to believe in the lies, at least in a sense, or they could forget what the truth really is. So there's a part of pathological lying that in some instances appears to border on delusional. Other possible motives for pathological lying behavior include to repair an unimpressive narrative, that really seems more like narcissistic personality disorder, to be consistent with success, which also seems like NPD, to be interesting, or just to be stimulating in conversation. Now, if pathological lying is a distinct mental disorder that's simply been overlooked, there are a number of theories about how these behaviors are different as they manifest in cluster B personality disorders. For example, if we compare pathological lying to antisocial personality disorder, with antisocial personality disorder, oftentimes the motive would be for some sort of profit. And with antisocial personality disorder, there would be no guilt associated with the lies. With pathological lying, there usually is guilt associated with the lies. So in essence, one of the reasons that someone could start to believe the lies would be to reduce feelings of guilt. Now, when we compare pathological lying to narcissistic personality disorder, we see that with NPD, there would be a purpose of being grandiose. 
to establish that someone is better than someone else, that they're superior. Also, a number of individuals with MPD believe they are already perfect, and that's not really a behavior we see with pathological lying. Comparing pathological lying to borderline personality disorder, a lot of times with borderline personality disorder, the lies have a purpose of avoiding abandonment, and sometimes individuals with this disorder falsely accuse other people to avoid rejection or to reject them. And we see a mood dysregulation tied in with some of the lying behavior in borderline personality disorder that we wouldn't see with pathological lying. Now with histrionic personality disorder, the major difference there would be that histrionic personality disorder has an attention-seeking component, and we don't think that's really a part of pathological lying. So regardless of which theory someone believes regarding pathological lying, it seems evident that this construct deserves more research. If it is a distinct mental disorder that's been overlooked, it'd be important to know that. And it's also important to know how it should be treated if it only really does appear in the context of other personality disorders or other mental disorders. I hope you found this description of pathological lying to be interesting. Thanks for watching.